Hi, Super G here, also known as Mr. Gillespie. In this video lecture, we're going to talk about scientific notation, something that we use as scientists to make big, big, big numbers and small, small, small numbers easier to deal with. I'll show you what I mean. I'll show you one big number that we use in chemistry quite often called Avogadro's number. Here it is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Done. This is Avogadro's number. A lot of zeros, a huge, huge, huge number. I don't even want to try to name it. It's something billion billions, you know, billion millions or something. It's so many zeros that if I had to put this into the calculator when I was doing a math problem with it, which we do in chemistry, it would be very inconvenient. So instead we've invented scientific notation. I'll show you how we write this number in scientific notation. This, by the way, is standard notation. It's how we write numbers normally. But for really, really big numbers, the scientific notation is written like this. First of all, we take the number itself, the 602, and we write it with one digit, a decimal place, and the rest of the number, like this. 6.02. That's the number itself. And then I have to tell someone, how big is it? How many zeros are behind it? So you say times 10 to them. And the, this is called the coefficient. This is called the power of 10, or the exponent. And the exponent on the 10 tells you how many times 10 this number is. It also shows you how many times the decimal has been moved over to go from this to this. So I'm going to count how many times I move the decimal to get this form. From here, a decimal, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So I had to move the decimal over 23 times. And there's the number in scientific notation, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Much easier to put into the calculator, much easier to write on the paper. Now, we use it for really big numbers, scientific notation, but we also use it for really, really, really small numbers. Let me show you one. 0 0.00000185. So this number is really, really small. And if I had to put this into a mathematical calculation in a calculator, I'd have to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I'd have to punch in 7 zeros. First of all, I wouldn't always get the correct number of zeros. Second of all, it takes a long time. So instead, we write this in scientific notation. The process is the same. We write the number itself as a digit, a decimal, and the rest of the number. And then we show the power of 10. It shows where the decimal place has been moved from. Watch. So I write 1.85. That's the number with a digit, a decimal place, and the rest of the number. And then it's times 10 to the. And we count how many times the decimal place has been moved over. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's been moved 7 times. Now, for real small numbers, we're moving that way. For big numbers, look, we move the decimal place this way. So, for the small number exponent, we write a negative. In this case, it was 7. So, the small number gets 1.85 times 10 to the negative 7. And that shows us the size of this number here. And again, this is much easier to pop into the calculator than all those zeros. Because we often will have problems that have both this type of number. Now let's, let's show what would happen if I multiplied these two numbers. How it would look here, and I also want to tell you how it would look on the calculator. I don't know if you can see this on the video, but uh, one of my students drew this yesterday, and I thought I'd keep it up for the video, just for fun. This is his view of me. Flames coming out of Super G's mouth and with some real apps. He's not a very good artist in that sense. So we have these two numbers, a really big number, a really small number, and we show them in scientific notation. Now let's see how it looks like if we want to multiply those two numbers. Well, we would say 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd times 1.85 times 10 to the negative 7th, and that equals now, there's something I want to say about how you use your calculator to have this type of number. 
a lot of students, without really understanding it, will write this in as 6.02 on their calculator, and then they'll do times 10 carat to the 23rd. Don't ever do that. Carat to the negative 7. Don't ever do that. Your scientific calculator is made for exactly this purpose, and it has a button called the exponent button. Now, on my graphing calculator, it's a little EE button, so I hit second EE. Some calculators have EXP, and some just have an E. But in any case, use the E button, or the EE button, instead of caret to the. In fact, the E stands for 10 to the, times 10 to the. So it would actually look like this on your calculator. 6.02 second EE, and that's what shows up on your calculator, is a big E. And then you just write the exponent. So the coefficient, E exponent, times 1.85, and you'd have the exponent key, and then negative 7. So let me punch that in to see how it looks. We have uh, 6.02 and EE to the 23, oh, I did that wrong, 6.02 EE to the 23 times 1.85 EE to the negative 7. And what I have here, my friends, is 1.11 times 10 to the 17th. On the calculator, it says 1.11 E 17, and I know it means this. So, write it like this, Put it in your calculator like this. And definitely have an easier time than using really, really, really big numbers with lots of zeros or really, really, really small numbers with lots of zeros. Do it the right way. Save yourself some frustration.